Welcome to the International Word Center, the place where the Word of God is central to everything because Jesus is the Word of God. If you're in looking for that place where you can understand the Word of God, you can find truth, that you can make sense of things in this world, you're in the right place because we're about to go before the throne of God and receive a word from him. You see, the Bible is just a collection of how God thinks. And if you can learn to think how God thinks, you're on your way to victory. You're on your way to an encouraging life, of uh, uh, a joyful life, a life full of peace and overcoming. So join us today. Helen and I, my wife and I, Rick, we invite you to join us every week as we do a fresh upload uh, weekly on Sundays and Thursdays. We do have Bible study as well here at the International Word Center Church. So go to the website at iwordcenter.church or .org, iwordcenter.org, and join us every Sunday. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, and that way you'll be notified every time a new upload uh, goes up. Just go and uh, look for Rick Washington. Uh, there's a couple out there, but I'm the only one preaching the word of God that I know of right now. So uh, let's get into the word today. But before we do, let's take out time, uh, which we always do, to just offer a thanksgiving to God. I tell you, when you cultivate a heart of thanksgiving, it just makes receiving so much easier. So join, we, join, me, join with me now. And just lift your hands wherever you are. Stop whatever you're doing and give your attention, your undivided attention to God Almighty. Father God, we just come before you now in the name of Jesus. And we come, God, with a grateful heart. We're thankful, God, for all that you do and all that you've done and all that you promised that you're going to do. We thank you, God, for righteousness. We thank you for forgiveness of our sins. We thank you for your mercies, God, that are new every morning. We thank you for your grace, God your help, your willingness to share your power with us. We thank you, Father God, for your long suffering toward us. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, God, for the precious gift of your spirit that abides with us forever. We thank you, God, in Jesus' name, for the blood of the Lamb that has redeemed us from the curse of the law of sin and death. We thank you, God, that you are a God that hears and answers our prayers. Thank you, God, that you are faithful and never the blame. Everything you do is right, and everything you say is so. We thank you, God, for giving us hearts that believe in you and trust in you. Thank you, Father God, for soundness of mind and spirit and heart. Thank you, God, for prosperity, providing all our needs. Thank you for our jobs, our incomes. Thank you for our homes and our clothes and, and automobiles. Thank you, Father God, just for you being you and taking good care of us and always thinking about us, that we would have a good and expected end. Father, we just say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, we want to pause and just say thank you to those faithful supporters out there with your prayers, with your talents, and with your treasures. Uh, if you want to get in on helping us, just write us on our comment page at iwordcenter.org. Let us know what the Lord is putting on your heart. If you want to support us with your prayers, pray for us, pray, 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 that we will push forward and do what God has called us to do here at the International Word Center. And that's to preach and teach the word in such a way that it builds you up and calls you to become mature in the things of God. Also, our assignment is to introduce you, the body of Christ, to the fivefold ministry as we, as God sends our way other ministries that represent him well. And so go to our website to watch and listen. And there's a list uh, of ministers and ministries there that you should take advantage of and expose yourself to it by clicking on watch and listen every word so that you can grow up in the things of God. So if you want to get in on supporting us with your giving, with your treasures, also on any of our website page, that's iwordcenter.org, click the donate button. If you prefer giving by mail, there is a mailing address at the bottom of each page. But before we get into the message, in before we get into the message today, I need to just slow down. I'm just so much wanting to get into the word. I just love the word of God. Don't you love the word of God? I love the word of God because loving the word of God, you're loving Jesus. Loving the word of God, you're loving God because the word was with God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. 
So let's pray. We can't do anything without God and we don't want to do anything with God, without God. I'm like Moses. If your presence doesn't go with me in this teaching or whatever we're doing, I don't want to go. So Father, we ask just that now in Jesus name, that your presence, the moving of your spirit, God, would move today in this teaching and this fellowshipping with you and with your word and with your spirit and with one another uh, virtually, God. We ask that you would express yourself, that you would manifest yourself, your presence, God, that you would move on our hearts and give us understanding hearts. Open our eyes that we understand you and your ways of doing and being right. Impart into us today, God, through your word, life, God. Impart into us today hope and strength and comfort and joy, Father. We ask right now, God, for the gifts of the Spirit to flow as you will, Holy Ghost. We invite you in and ask that you would just do whatever you want to do. Get glory to your name, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. And if you agree with me, say amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, we've been teaching for the last several weeks, about five weeks to be exact, on the subject of seeking the Lord. And we said that, and we won't have time to review everything, so go back if you haven't listened to those so that you can catch up and uh, get the full understanding of what it means to seek the Lord. And in this time and day, we need to seek the Lord as never before. So we need to understand that seeking the Lord is not like he's lost or something and you got to find him, even though the Lord did say, seek me and you shall find me. But seeking the Lord is more about uh, you being in position where he can reveal himself to you. God is everywhere, but he doesn't manifest himself to everyone. So seeking, seeking the Lord is more about getting your heart in position, your spirit in position so God can reveal himself to you. So seeking the Lord first requires you to choose to search him out, to crave him, uh, to seek after him, to require him as a necessity. And that comes by studying of his word. And what we said, and I'm getting a little ahead of my notes, but one of the major uh, ingredients, if you will, of seeking God, it requires faith. You cannot seek God with your natural five senses. You can't seek God with your natural eyes or your ears, amen, or, or what you feel or smell or taste, but you have to seek the Lord by faith. And faith comes how? Romans 10 and 17 lets us know that faith, and let me kind of translate or give a definition here of what faith is in the context of this teaching or any teaching, faith is when you choose to accept as true what God has said. Amen. So the word of God is the is 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 key that you have to read to seek God. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that today. But let's read our foundational scripture in Hebrews 11 and 6. So stay with us because what you're going to hear today and experience today, we're believing that the presence of God is going to show up whatever, wherever you are. So if you're in your car, you may want to hurry up and get home and pull over. If you're watching this on a, on a device or something, uh, if you're uh, in a place where you might you know, want to sit down because I'm believing as you listen to this teaching today that God's going to confirm it with his presence manifested in your life. Amen. Hebrews 11 and 6 uh, in the Amplified Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please and be satisfactory to him with a capital H, God. For whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he is a rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him out. So it requires faith to first believe he exists. You're not going to search for someone or seek for someone you don't exist. So faith is required to seek the Lord. So you've got to get the word of God in abundance into your spirit, not just into your mind, but faith is of the heart and not the intellect. Number two, once you believe he exists, you got to believe he's a good God. He's not standing by to clobber you over the head, but he's looking, longing to and wanting to reward you, bless you, give you out of his storehouse of treasures, 
everything you need and that your heart could even desire. And we're not talking about just tangible and natural things. He'll do that also. But there's true riches, the peace of God that passeth all understanding. The word of God tells us, amen, that the kingdom of God under his rule, under his domain, where he runs everything, when you submit to him and his authority and his rule and his reign, his kingdom, the kingdom of God is not in food and drink. Come on. But it's in joy in the Holy Ghost. It's in peace. It's in love. Amen. And it's in righteousness. The kingdom of God is in righteousness, a peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Those are the true riches. When you got those things, amen, the other things, sometimes you don't even uh, have your hard mind on them so much because God just adds them on to you anyway. That same scripture in the BBE translation, the last part of it, it says that God is a rewarder of all those who make a serious search for him. So if you're going to be a God seeker, if you're going to seek the Lord, it's a serious thing. You can't just do it half bake. It's not just some after, I like what the message Bible say in Romans 12. It's not an athletic competition that you just compete for in the afternoon and then walk away and forget about it. No, you got to have a seriousness of heart because in the TPT translation, that same passage there, it says that you got to believe he rewards the faith of those who give all their passion and strength into seeking him. It, we said it, and this phrase is probably the best way to put it so you can get it into right perspective of what it means to seek the Lord and what it means for those who will find him, who will experience him, that he will manifest himself to, that you can have a relationship with. God is not someone you can date. Just going to church on Sunday is not seeking the Lord. It's a continuous uh, attitude and process that goes on in the, in the heart of a man and woman 24 seven. Now there are things that you'll do outwardly, like raise your hand and, and give offerings and, uh, uh, be a blessing to people and pray and worship and et cetera. But those are outward expressions of what's really going on in you. So you've got to give your all to it. You got to get married to God. To death do you part. Covenant relationship. We can teach on those later and we have in the past. But what I, what the Holy Spirit wants to express to us today, that if you're going to be a seeker of God and find him, see him in a relationship that manifests itself in this natural life. It's a all your passion, all in type of relationship. We talked about in the past, and I'll do a quick review, that Seeking God is your purpose. That's what men and women, uh, mankind was created for. And we cannot be men and women of double purposes. In other words, you can have other purposes, but they cannot be first place. The only purpose in life is that we would be a seeker, a lover, a, 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 a worshiper of God. And that's really what that word seek means when you do a good word study on it. It gives you the picture of someone that's seeking something in the sense of worshiping it, making it first in their lives. So we cannot let our job, our careers, or, or something else take the place of the purpose of God for you and me, and that's to seek him with all our heart. We also said, why should we seek God? Because once you get into this uh, lifestyle of being a seeker of the Lord, you'll realize it's necessary. Like, as we said, like the ocean needs water, we need the Lord. We cannot be what he's called us to be or do what he's called us to do in this life without him. It's a necessity that we seek him. We need the Lord. And as Jesus said in John 15, without me, you can do nothing. Amen. And then we talked about in another session about what does seeking the Lord looks like. And actually that filled up about three sessions. We talked about seeking the Lord, as we said before, is you got to put him first place. It requires faith and diligence. Amen. Is, is needed. And we said diligence is putting forth every effort to seek him. It's not just a passive, oh, well, I'm going to sit here and fold my hands and see what the Lord does. It requires all of you, spirit, soul, and body, and your resources to seek the Lord. Amen. Last week, we talked about making room for God. 
That's what seeking the Lord looks like. You make room for him. And we use the scripture over in, uh, uh, was it the first Chronicles, where David found the Ark of the Covenant, which represented the presence of God, and he made room for it. He pitched a tent for it, the Bible says. We need to pitch a tent in our heart for God. We need to make room for him. We need to make room for him in our home. We need to make room for him in our workplace, in our relationship, and especially we need to make room for him in our church that we don't get caught up in agendas and leave him out. We need to make room for seeking him. Amen? And today we want to get into something a little deeper today, and it's going to talk about uh, uh, still what it looks like, but in the sense of, oh, well, let's just get into it. And, and the phrase dance like David comes to mind of what we want to talk about, talk about today. So just stay right there. Hold that, put your finger on that thought, dancing like David. But before we do, I just want to uh, read a couple scriptures as we get ready to launch out into today's topic. And I guess you would say, you know, uh, serving the Lord, with joy, seeking him with joy. We're going to get into the subject of joy today and, and why joy is it so important when you're seeking the Lord. Because if you're not seeking the Lord with joy, it's not accepted as worship to God. Because joy, oh glory to God, this ain't in my notes. Joy is a identifier or a, a telltale uh that you're doing it willingly. And if you read in the Old Testament, which is a, a type and a shadow, it gives us a picture of what God wants and how he likes things and what he's yearning for. It's when you yearn for him, he wants it to be willingly. It's one time the people were given, or he told Moses to tell the people to come and give an offering to for the temple, the building of the temple, uh, not the temple, but the uh, uh, Ark of the Covenant, the tent of meetings and those type of things that God told him to make. But he said, all who would be of a willing heart and, and to have a willing heart, you're full of joy. You have an eagerness, you have a gladness. Matter of fact, we taught a whole series. You can go on the website and dig it up uh, or the YouTube channel called Serving the Lord with Gladness. It'd be, it would do you good to go listen to that series. But a willing heart always is enjoying with joy. So if we're going to seek the Lord and experience his presence and, ex and, and, and be in his, and just have him in our life. Like he wants to be in our life. Amen. We're going to have to learn to do it with joy, but Hey, good news. You can't do it in your own strength. You need the Holy spirit to seek the Lord properly and accurately. So seeking God again, we said it before, it is not like he's hiding, but it's like you would seek a job or seek good health. You would do the things necessary to gain them or find the job or, 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 or appropriate good health. You begin to eat right, sleep right. Uh, you'd begin to get rid of the junk stuff. The same thing is true. If you really want a job and you're seeking a job, it's not like a job is hidden. There's plenty of jobs out there, but in order for you to locate one and find one and and, and have it presented to you, you've got to do the necessary things. You've got to make phone calls. You've got to get a resume, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So seeking God is all about choosing to love him and doing spiritual things over carnal things. Uh, I was listening to a series the other day, and this expresses what, what the Lord has given me right here, and he brings it to my remembrance, is that some people uh, seek God or do the will of God because it, rest, it restrain, they feel like it restrains them. They can't go here. They can't watch this. They can't uh, do this uh, because they said, I can't do that because the word of God says I can't. Let's flip the script and set our heart on God and love him and seek him and search for him with all our heart. And it becomes a joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. It comes a pleasure and it becomes a cheerfulness to do the word and do the will of God versus it being a restraint, like it's a law that I don't, I can't lie because the word of God say I can't lie. No, I get to tell the truth and I love telling the truth and I hate lying. Are you following what I'm saying? Well, let's get into the teaching today, talking about giving it all you got, uh, still what uh, seeking the Lord looks like. And today we're focusing in on kind of a subtitle of dancing like David. So go to first Chronicles, the 15th chapter, 
Uh, we're going to, this is where we left off last week at the first verse. I'll give you a few moments to turn there. First Chronicles, the 15, verse 1 through 3, I'm going to read out of the Amplified. It says, David made for himself houses in, the, houses in the city of David, and he prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched a tent for it. Then David said, none should carry the ark of God, but the Le Levites, for the Lord chose them to carry the ark of God and to minister to him forever. And David assembled all Israel at Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord to its place, which he had prepared for it. Uh, they had not sought the Lord like this as long as Saul was king. Now, Saul was no longer king. He had been uh, died in battle and God had ordained and anointed David to be king. And David rose up and said, let's seek the Lord like we should have been doing. And the first thing they did is sought for God and that Ark of the Covenant, this box that Moses made overlaid with gold, amen, was representative of the presence of God manifested presence of the God representing and, and giving remind, remind, reminding us what was in it. The, the book of the law, the 10 commandments, the, the bowl of manna, the budding rod of uh, Aaron, just giving us reminders of how good he is and how powerful and all the good things he had done for the children of Israel. And we're going to get into that some more, but in first Chronicles, if you drop down to the 15th chapter and the 25th verse, let's read on and pick up here for today's uh, study and teaching. It says, so David, verse 25, uh, 1 Chronicles 15. So David, the elders of Israel, and the captains over thousands went to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the house of Obed-Edom with joy. Underline that in your Bible, uh, or write it in the margin of something, with joy. They were seeking the Lord with joy. Now, joy that we're talking about here is not happiness, okay? Happiness is dependent on, on circumstances. But joy, you can be in joy no matter what the circumstance. Let me say that again. You can be in joy no matter the circumstances. And we're going to talk about that some more today. Let's read another verse here. Go down to the 28th verse, 1 Chronicles 15 and 28. It says, thus all Israel brought up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord with shouting. Come on. When you enjoy, <laughs> hallelujah, shouting accompany joy. And then it goes on to say, and sound of the cornet, the trumpets, the cymbals, sounding aloud with harps and lyres. Come on, when you got joy, there is singing. Come on, there is shouting. There is music when you got joy. Oh, somebody say hallelujah to that. So when you say, what are you talking about, brother? What I'm saying is when you're in joy, you ain't got, you're not in the molly grubs. I don't care what the circle, we're not talking about circumstances. We're not talking about everything going well for you. But when you're seeking the Lord, you need to make sure you're doing it in joy. Have you ever been in some churches when you go in and it don't look like they having no church service? They're not seeking the Lord. I mean, it look like they're doing something else other than seeking the Lord. Amen. But let, let's go to another verse. Let's keep reading. Let's flip on over to the 16th verse. We're going somewhere, so stick with me because this is a key component that if we want to seek the Lord like never before so that we can experience him and see his presence like never before, that we can represent him well on planet earth, that people will see us as a city seated on a hill, amen, that will be salt, that has not lost its savor, that we're still salty, that we're changing the taste of wherever we go. We carry a fragrance of the mighty God, the love of God, the power of God. And it's all about us as a body of believers that we need to seek the Lord as never before. Amen. And first Chronicles 16 and four, it goes on to say that David, he appointed Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord and to celebrate 
There's a celebration going on because the folks are in joy. And I submit to you today as believers that get today, born again, spirit filled believers, we can have this kind of joy 24 seven, no matter what the circumstance is going on. You can have a song in your heart. You can have a celebration going on in your heart. You say, but I'm going through a tough time. This happened and that happened. We're not talking about happiness. We're not talking about feeling good. We're talking about the joy of the Lord. Amen. And we're going to get into some more definitions of that. I'm just, we're building, we're building here. The Lord is doing something for us here today, but it goes on to say that David appointed Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord and to celebrate by calling to mind, thanking and praising the Lord, the God of Israel. Now drop down in that same chapter, first Chronicles 16, uh, drop down to the seventh verse through the 12th verse. And it went on to say, that then on that day, David first entrusted to Asapha, I think I got that right, A-S-A-P-H, and his brethren sing the singing of thanks to the Lord. Oh, come on. Let's just thank the Lord for a moment. Oh, we thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. And we set our hearts in Jesus name to seek you, to seek you, to seek you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you. Let's keep reading. Glory to God. In verse eight, it says, oh, oh, well, let me go back. He set the singing. He set him Asaph, Asaph and his brethren, the singing of thanks to the Lord as their chief task. David just had a choir, a group of people that they're the men. Come on, man. Their chief task, their number one task was just to sing thanks to the Lord. Glory to God. We need a group of a men's choir, amen, that just up in this, and their whole chief thing is before service start, that they just come in for an hour or two and just sing thanks unto the Lord. That's seeking the Lord, y'all. I'm looking forward to it. Verse eight, it says, oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name and make his doings and make known his doings among the peoples. Verse nine says, sing to him, sing praises to him, meditate on and talk of all his wondrous works and devoutly praise them. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Yearn for, that's a good word, yearn for God. You need to, how do you yearn for God? In other words, how do you desire God so strongly? The more you taste something, the more you want it. The more attention you give to God, the more you yield to the spirit of God, the more you want it. Come on, take us back, Lord. Pray this with me. Say, Father God, in Jesus' name, take me back to that place where I first receive you. Not necessarily not knowing of things about God, but that first love, as Jesus said, return to your first love, that first yearning, that strong desire that you just wanted God. I mean, I almost, you know, you see a lot of us in uh, work wasn't our main interest of getting to work. Our main interest was getting to church. I know that was me and still is. Amen. But it goes on to say, yearn for and seek his face and to be in his presence continually. Mm. Verse 12, earnestly remember the marvelous deeds which he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered as in Egypt. God brought you and me out of Egypt. God brought you and me out of the world. He brought you and me out of sin. He brought you and me out of very many, many circumstances that weren't pleasant, out of many trials, out of many tests. Some of you, like myself, have been brought out of uh, sickness and disease. Some of you have been bought out, brought out of poverty and lack. Come on, you need to rehearse these things and constantly thank God about these things. Bring them to mind and remind yourself and others of them continuously because what that will do, it will stir up the joy of the Lord in you. It won't be based on what's going on, what you're seeing, feeling, or tasting, or hearing at the time, but it'll be based on God and who he is. So to seek God joyfully, we have to remember who God is, how mighty he is, and all he has done for you and for me. It'll keep your heart full of joy. Are you listening to me today? It's so key to seek the Lord with joy because it denotes that you're seeking him willingly, not out of a 
uh, restraint that you got to do it, you know, a whip that I got to do it, but you're unwillingly do it. No, God wants you to seek him with a glad heart, with joyfulness. And here's, let's talk about how to establish that joyful heart, uh, that joy, joyful heart. Let's spend the rest of the time we got with today's uh, teaching on talking about how to establish and cultivate a joyful heart. Amen. In Psalms 118, turn there. Uh, verse four, are you getting something? I am. I'm being stirred up by Father God. I mean, before I begin teaching this uh, session today, I was doing some worshiping and praying and the Lord God just came down on me and I just, God just could sense his presence. I hope you're sensing it right now. He's everywhere. Amen. If you're not, just listen to this over and over and over because you need faith to receive from God. You need faith to seek God and hearing the word of God is what stimulates or activates faith in God that you accept this as true that he truly exists, that he's a real God and he's a good God. He's a rewarder, but it's the requirement, the qualifier of receiving from God and being in his presence, manifested presence is you've got to seek the Lord with all your heart and with all your passion. Somebody say amen to that. Psalms 118 verse one through four out of the God's word translation says this, give thanks to the Lord because he is good. Oh, come on, say that with me. God is good. And it says, because his mercies endure forever. Verse two says, Israel should say, say, I should say, his mercy endures forever. The descendants of Aaron should say, his mercy endures forever. Those who fear the Lord, do you fear him today? Do you highly regard and respect God as the supreme almighty God that's worthy of our obedience and service, amen? And then those who fear the Lord should say his mercy endures forever. Has God been merciful to you? I know he's been merciful to Rick and Helen, Helen and I, we, he's been so merciful. And I like what Keith Moore, his definition of mercy here is that you don't get the consequences of the things you didn't do or failures or sins. You don't get those consequences, but you still get hallelujah the good things that God had promised and foreordained for you to have. God's been merciful, merciful, merciful to us. So we need to just take the next hour after this video goes out, take you some time and just begin to say, the Lord is good and his mercies endures forever. His mercies endures forever. And then begin to list off some of those mercies he's shown you. Now you say, you know, sometimes God didn't uh, come through like I thought he would. If you really think about it and rehearse it, how things went down, he did. Come on. He took care of that person time after time after time. You forget something. Sometimes we forget the first and the second and the third and the fourth time we interceded for ourselves or for somebody else. And God came through. Are you listening to me? God always comes through. He won't override your will, but God is a good God and his mercies endureth forever. Say it with me. God is a good God and his mercies endureth forever. Psalms 107 verse one through two in the Amplify, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. You need to rehearse this over and over in your mind today till it becomes your thought pattern that God is good. He doesn't do anything bad. The devil is the stiller and the thief. He's the he's the destroyer. He's the one that uh, is that brings sickness and disease and disasters and calamities. God is not the author of those things. For the Bible says, oh, give thanks to the Lord. And I choose to believe and accept this to be true. I hope you do too. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his mercies and loving kindness endure forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so what? That God is good and his mercies endure forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he has delivered from the hand of the adversary. I know God has delivered me and Helen from the hand of the adversary. We are going to heaven and not to hell. He's our redeemer. He's our healer. He's our protector. I know right now the word of God is getting into your spirit and joy is coming. And that takes us into uh, the second thing we want to talk about. And we've been doing it that you got to remember 
that once you begin to think on the goodness of God and the mercies of God and all the good things he's done for you, and as you give thanks, you need to say it over and over. You need to rehearse it. Like God told uh, Joshua, let not this meditate on the word of God day and night. What I've said, the word of God, what God has said, and we've got so many books here of things God has said that we can meditate on it, think about it, roll it over in our mind and rehearse it. Speak it out loud. Let not the word of God, Joshua 1 and 8 says, let not the word of God depart out of your mouth. In your mouth should be filled with rehearsing the goodness of God and all the good things he has done in Colossians uh, 3 and 16 turn there as we get ready to come to a close today but the second thing we want to talk about is some key components that you need to have actively in your life if you're going to seek the Lord with joy and I hope you understand the importance or the needfulness of seeking God with joy and not out of uh, on this, like, like you got to do it or somebody's making you do it. You need to do it willingly. And when you have a joyful heart, it is a signpost. It is a, a signal that you are willfully, because you're glad about it. You want to do it and you need help with this joy. It's not something that's natural. The joy we're talking about is supernatural. Amen. In Colossians 3 and 16, there's two things you need to have the joy of the Lord, jo the joy of the Lord, this supernatural joy, this, this gladness, this cheerfulness, this I willingly want to worship and serve God. One, we've talked about it. You've got to remind yourself of who he is and what he's done. But number two, you've also got to keep your heart full of the word and you have to stay full of the spirit of God. Let's read a few scriptures uh, before we get into a little more teaching. In Colossians 3.16, these scriptures we're going to read is what I'm about to say as the Holy Spirit leads, amen, that we're basing it on. In Colossians 3.16, uh, out of the TPT translation, it says, Let the word of Christ, the word of the anointed one, Jesus, live in you richly live in you. He said in John 15, if my words abide in you, then you can ask what you will. How do you get the word in you richly? Meditating on it, thinking about it, talking about it, listening to it, reading it, muttering to yourself, making songs with the scripture. That's what the Psalms are. David constantly saying songs. Psalms are songs. He constantly saying songs about what God had did for him and what God was going to do for him. Oh, let the redeemed of the Lord. That's a song. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I don't know what the, what the rhythm and the melody was, but you can put your own little ditty to it and begin to just say his mercies endure forever. Come on. I've got some, uh, uh, songs from uh, uh, Integrity years ago. They took scriptures and set it to music. Get you something like that and just let your mind and your heart become saturated with the word of God. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to be cheerful. You're going to be glad. And it's not coming out of your emotions. It's not coming out of your head. It's not coming out of something based on how good things look or happening. Come on. It's going to come out of your spirit. And it's one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And that's why we've been saying pretty much every upload, every episode of this series, seeking the Lord, that you cannot seek the Lord on your own accurately. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. We're dependent upon the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our connection or our source with God. He's in the earth and he's in you if you've invited him in and if if you if you've invited him in and if you have not uh, stay tuned and we'll lead you in a prayer to ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But it goes on to say it goes on to say in Colossians 3:16, I'm slowing down. Let the word of Christ live in you richly, flooding you with all wisdom. Apply the scriptures as you teach and instruct one another with the Psalms and with festive praises and with prophetic songs given to you spontaneously by the spirit. So sing to God with all your hearts. That's what David and all the Le Levites and all the people were doing. They were singing Psalms, uh, the mercies of the Lord endureth forever. Amen. They were rejoicing. They was praising God. They were filling their hearts 
with the word of God, what he had said and what he had done and who he was. They were just rejoicing. They were full of gladness. They were full of cheerfulness from the inside out. Come on. Are you listening to me? Uh, so God requires of us to fill ourselves up with the word of God. It's not automatic. He doesn't do it for you. You have to willingly offer yourself to the time spent with God, making room for him, pitch a tent somewhere throughout your day, all day long, so that you can seek the Lord. Amen. Go to Ephesians 5 and 18 and 19. In Ephesians 5, 18 and 19, it goes, and do not get drunk with wine. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But but ever be filled. Now, here's what you need to drink. But ever be filled and stimulated with the Holy Spirit. Speak out to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, offering praise with voices and instruments and making melody with all your heart to the Lord. This is what we read about in First Chronicles with David and all the children of Israel. They were singing and rejoicing and full of joy. Amen. But today we can be filled with the Holy Spirit, which will help us maintain uh, that spiritual joy, that spiritual fruit of the spirit, if you will, of joy, of gladness and cheerfulness. Not talking about being giddy and happy and all that stuff based on cause you got some good feelings or some good circumstances or some good has happened to you. Yeah, that's fine. It's okay to have that, but they're fleeting. A bad, if you don't have joy, if you can get, if you get a bad report or something uh, negative happen, you get a bill unexpectedly, your happiness goes out the window or out the door. But joy, Joy doesn't change no matter what the circumstance, because joy is a spiritual, a spiritual character in your spirit that the Holy Spirit will work in you. that gives you a cheerfulness. It gives you a joyfulness because of who your God is. Come on. Hallelujah. That you know God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him out, that he's faithful. His mercies endure forever. He's got your back. If God is for you, who can be against you? Somebody shout a man to that. So joy comes from the Greek word that is the same word that means grace. Amen. So grace, the definition of grace, God's grace. I know we use uh, the definition a lot of times in teaching of unmerited favor. It's that too. It is that also, but it's so much more than that. Grace is God's willingness to give to you his ability, his power. That's what grace is. It's empowerment to do and be. So God will give you his ability to bear up, to be glad, to be cheerful in any situation and circumstance. This, as I was meditating on this before uh, I began this teaching, this recording, this is a picture the Lord spoke to my heart that depicts what we're saying in this teaching today about seeking the Lord with joy. And it's found in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said to the disciples on the day of, on the Passover before he went to the cross for your sin and my sins, he said, I have longed for this day. I anticipated it. And if you read the scripture, he looked toward the cross with joy. You say he looked toward the cross with joy. He had joy, not happiness, but joy. He, the joy of, of going to the cross was before him. He was cheerful. He was glad. He was willing to die for you and me and obey Father God. That's what we're talking about. You need the joy of the Lord and he will give it to you by the Holy Spirit. Your part is to yield to the Holy Spirit and the best way I found in my life and others have taught the same thing to yield to the Holy Spirit is yielding to the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. Now, that word tongue just means language. The Holy Spirit gives you a supernatural ability to speak in a language that you're not speaking to men. You're not talking to yourself. Now, sometimes God will give you the understanding of what you're doing or what you're saying, the interpretation, but you're still speaking to God and he's hearing every word and it's perfect language that lines up perfectly with God's will. And we know what happens when you ask anything according to God's will. Amen. You get it. But not only that, speaking in tongue is not just 
Prayer, speaking in tongues, also gives you supernatural ability to worship and glorify God like David was doing here and like the Bible is uh, telling us to do here, to sing spiritual psalms uh, as the Holy Spirit gives you, speaking, singing in the Spirit, singing in tongues and the language that He gives you. Amen. What it does for you, you're drinking, if you will. You're being filled with the Holy Spirit and you'll have such joy, such gladness, such cheerfulness, such willingness in serving and seeking the Lord. I hope you're getting this and I know you are because I pray that we would today. Amen. So as we get ready to close, we need to stay full of the word of God. Amen. By meditating on it day and night, reading it, listening. It. The other day, my wife, Helen, told me she'd been listening to the Bible and it just filled her heart with so much joy that she just when she's uh, in the kitchen doing things, she's just got the Bible plan, got the Bible plan and listening to it and going in your spirit. Amen. The second thing we need to do, if you want to have a heart full of the joy of the Lord that shows that you're willingly seeking him and serving him, you need to be filled with with the Spirit of God by yielding to Him. And you'll be so full of joy because as we seek the Lord with joy, we will experience Him, we will experience him at a level and a death like never before. We'll be a river of life flowing out of us. Amen. And makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. We will be filled with the presence of God as we begin to go about the will of God and go about our day-to-day -day life. So being in faith in God produces the joy of the Lord. Amen. So in Deuteronomy 4 and 29, it says, but if, but if from there you will seek, inquire for, and requires a necessity, the Lord your God, you will find him. If you truly seek him with all your heart and mind and soul and life. My prayer today is for us that we will yield ourselves to the Spirit of God, stay, get, and stay full of the Word of God, that our faith will be activated and operative, that we'll have the joy of the Lord, we can draw from the Holy Spirit that cheerfulness and that gladness, that willfulness as we seek the Lord, and then, and only then, will we see the things that God wants to do for us and for, other, for others through us, amen? Are you with me? Let's pray. Just pray this prayer with me. Say, Father God, I want what you have for me. I want it all. So I'm asking you now in Jesus' name to help me to yield to you in a greater measure than I ever have, to seek you with all my heart, with all my passion, with all my strength, to make room for you, to keep you first place in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, before we go, go back and listen to the other uh, other teachings on seeking the Lord. Amen. Uh, so that God can just impart into you and instill in you. Not this, not something just for now. This should be for the rest of your life. Amen. For the rest of eternity, that our hearts be on fire and fill with a passion and desire. Amen. A yearning for God like never before. If you seek him, you'll find him again. Not like he's hiding but that he'll be manifested to you and in your life. Amen. Uh, but we do want to take out just a little time before we close today on this video recording uh, to offer to those who have not made Jesus the Lord of their lives, uh, been born again, have been given your uh, place in the kingdom of God and in the family of God. It's, it's not true that everybody is a child of God. I know religious people say that we're all God's children. No. We're all God's creation. Amen. He created mankind. But in order for you to be his child, you have to have his DNA. And when man first was created, Adam and Eve, the first man and woman, they were born with his DNA. They were created with his DNA. He said, let us make man in our own image, like us, spirits, spirits that can speak. Amen. Uh, he made us just like him. But when Adam and Eve sinned, did something out of disobedience to God, a rift took place between them and God and a change took place in their DNA. They became sinners and no longer were right with God. 
But God loved us so much. He loved Adam and Eve. He loved the whole world so much. He created us for the purpose, for fellowship, to have a family. That he said, devil, you tricked my, my uh, man and my woman, deceived them, and took them into captivity and tainted them and poisoned them uh, with your sin disease and, and corrupted their nature. I'm not going to leave it there. So the plan of salvation is in place. And it has been enacted to all who will believe. What is the plan of salvation? Sin requires payment. God said the soul that sins shall die, be separated him forever. And the effects of physical death and sickness and disease and all those misfortunes come from us being separated from God. He's the giver of life. He's the giver of light. Everything good flows from him. The reason you have good health is because that came from God. The reason bad health is, is around our sickness and disease, it comes from the devil. When you get separated from God, you get separated from whatever is good in this life as well as in the life to come. Now, God is a merciful God. He still allows good things to flow into the just and the unjust life, those who are right with him and those who are not. But if you want to get right with God so that you can experience all the goodness that he has, that you can love him and he love you right back the way he wants to, amen, you've got to be born again. You've got to be changed into another person than you are now. You've got to be made righteous. You've got to be restored to the original intent that God created you. And as we were saying, judgment for sin is death. And the way God fixed this thing, if you will, he sent his son Jesus, the sinless man born of a virgin, to die for the whole world. And whoever would believe that he took the, their place and died, God will say, because you accepted that payment of my son Jesus dying for you, I will declare you righteous, and forgive you of all your sin, but more than forgive you, he will also recreate you by the power of the Holy Spirit into a righteous person again. And now you can have fellowship with him, and now you are truly a child of God. If that's you today, there's a simple prayer that you can invite God into your life. It requires your will, you choosing, and your faith, that you will accept as true what I just said to you, that everyone's born a sinner, and there's only one way of remedy in that, fixing that, is you've got to accept Jesus as the sacrifice for your sins. So pray this with me. Say, Father God, in Jesus' name, I want to be right with you. I ask that you would forgive me of my sins, and I purpose to change my life, my thinking, my speaking, my deeds. I believe it's all possible because Jesus died in my place, and I also believe that you raised him from the dead and he lives forevermore. In Jesus' name I pray. You prayed that and believed it in your heart. God's at work in you right now. He's forgiven you of all your sin and he's changing you right now from the inside out into another person. You're not the same person anymore. You are righteous, righteous, righteous. You are okay with God, a clean slate. Now, he didn't change your mind. You got to renew that. You got to learn how to think again. He changed the real you, your spiritual makeup. He didn't change this physical body. This body still has the tendencies to want to do wrong, to sin. But God gives us help on that. He gives us the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. But as we said earlier, God won't take control of you. He has to be invited in. So you need to be baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, so that the help of God's Spirit will help you to be what He's called you to be, to help you to renew and change the way you think, to help you to take this physical body and bring it into control and tell it what to do instead of it telling you what to do. So let's ask for that precious gift of the Holy Spirit. Say, Father God, in Jesus' name, I want everything that you have for me. I ask that you would fill me now with the precious gift of your spirit. In Jesus' name, I believe I have received. Amen. Now, here's what you can expect to happen. As you take time out and make room for God and worship him and pray and talk to him and study the Bible, he will lead you into all truths. 
He will show you what he has for you. He will help you. He will reveal to you things. He will encourage you. He will strengthen you. He will empower you. Come on. Empower you to do what? To tell others about him. To empower you over the powers of the devil. Come on. He will also give you the supernatural ability to speak in a language, speak in tongues, that will help you to be full of the Holy Spirit, help you to yield to the Holy Spirit, help you to pray and help you to worship God in such a way, to such a depth, that you will experience God and all that He is and His power and His manifested presence. Amen? So take some time out after this video, get along with God, begin to worship Him and see what God will do with you and He'll take your life and get glory to Himself. Amen? So the next time, always remember, if you made Jesus the Lord of your life, who the Son sets free, you're free indeed. You're free from the devil. You're free from sin. You're free from all the misfortunes and miseries that have come into planet Earth because of sin. You are now translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of our almighty God. In Jesus' name, amen.